What could I talk about? What should I talk about? How many of you have thought about this when you get up and talk? <laughs> Only one? <laughs> what should I talk about, gentlemen? <laughs> do you ever think about this when you're called to do an impromptu speech? Yes. This is also what I think about, especially now that I'm here. I don't write my speeches. I've done about two, four advanced manuals, plus ten. That's fourteen. I just talk and share with you who I am. Today, I want to tell you that it is not what you talk about really that matters. The first thing is being missed. And what do you think that is? Any guesses? <coughs> Any guess? Passion. Passion. Personal experience. Personal experience. Terry. Terry. This is Terry. Would you please come in front? So I will give you a topic. You give me three sentences. All right. Who are you, Terry? This is the topic of your speech. So please give me about three sentences from that one topic. One thing you should know about me is I'm a scientist. That's one. The other one is I go to a Christian go to church every week. Third, I have a passion for exploring, learning new things, which I attribute to my parents always asking why. <laughs> learning new things, striving to improve myself. Thank you. I need another volunteer from the back. Can we have Drew with two? Second, 
It is a quotes that I get from others. Third, it is about entertaining you. So where am I within all those things? Tell me. Where am I? I'm not here. Isn't that very interesting? So as you can see, there are many popular speakers. But if you have a look at what they talk about, these are ideas, opinions of others that they interpreted. Okay? Now, I'm on my deathbed. <laughs> I want to review my life. What have I done? Oh, I gave a speech. And I actually explained what Einstein said. And also what can be said with the changes. So, you know, it doesn't make sense. So it's like, what I want to do is like this. When I'm on my deathbed and reviewing my life, I would be able to say, <laughs> oh, I have spoken. I have spoken. I have cleared up the meaning of the speech. I have cleared up the meaning of the speech and redefined really it to a point where it is mutually beneficial for all of humanity. In other words, we first of all, we're not judging anyone if we sound off who we are. Because if, for example, I say, the scientist said that, the, that Monsanto is bad because he's into genetic engineering, let's say. There is someone out there who will say, no, that is good. I mean, you know, there's always a bias. There's a pro and a con. Now, if I stand as who I am, let's say, for example, I have a relationship with the corn, and I talk about that. You see, the corn is from the ground. The earth feeds us. I'm grateful for the earth. And I want to align my expression to the expression of the earth, recognizing that the corn is here to to give me nutrition, just as any other foodstuff. And whoever is doing genetic engineering, I wouldn't judge that. Rather, I would look at myself and say, what am I doing that is similar to what Monsanto is doing? Am I genetically engineering something? No, because I'm not a scientist. But have, have a look. What he's doing is, in fact, manipulating something that occurs naturally for profit. You see? But in my life, I manipulated men when I was young. You see? And so, something like this. Oh, I like that guy. I better give that guy like me. You see? And guess what I do? I put on this, this um, high heels. Nice bag and all that. Go to the gym, put on some makeup, you know, like, aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> now, he's got a Porsche, man. I mean, you know, he's loaded. Let's get the man. You know what, that guy, you know, doesn't suspect anything. You see? This is how I manipulate. So I'm actually creating Monsanto. I'm at, because inside our cells, there are cells that communicate with each other. It's only us, in fact, that is so separate from each other because we are here. And we are inside our mind, especially when we talk. You know, we cannot even sound off who we are, how we change. It's not about Gandhi saying, be the change. I want to be able to tell you that I stopped judging me by being vegetarian for 29 years and embraced all food items again because I realized that I am one and equal with everything that is here. 
And then on my deathbed, I would like to say, I, in my lifetime, I actually embraced all food items and not say to the court, no, you are made mistake. So ladies and gentlemen, when you see yourself asking yourself this question, what should I talk about? Remember this speech. So the table is open for question and answers. Any, any question from there? So I would like to ask one question. Now that you've given us this question, I would like to ask what type of appointment are you in? I'm actually a health coach. I have finished from the Institute of Integrity Nutrition. Back home, I have I do other things like being a real estate agent and other things in sales, but that's what I do. I help people figure out things that they, they can't figure out and hold their hand and we walk together. So if so I, I do have a question. So I enjoyed your presentation here. And so your ideas and your thinking was that a, a was it a process? I mean, you came to your to understand yourself and where you're at now. Was it a process, or can you go back to was there like one particular event where you said maybe I should shift some thinking or shift some things? After being vegetarian, vegan, cooked vegan, raw vegan, and then fruitarian, I was diagnosed with fourth stage breast cancer. That was when I really investigated what health is. And I found out that health is not absence of disease, but rather it is the alignment of physical, mental, and social well-being of man. And then after that, I investigated not eating and drinking for three and a half days, and that's when I realized that it's not about eating or drinking, it's about who I am. And if I have conflicts within myself saying, no, I don't like to eat that, ah, this is beautiful, let me eat a, week, a lot of this. So then, even if it's raw vegan, it doesn't really matter. It is a desire and a fear of something that's creating this conflict. And of course, I'm making myself more and more and more, which means I'm standing from a point of lack. And so I want to multiply myself to have an illusion of greatness. And guess what myself did? It did the same thing. It multiplied in, as cancer cells. And what it told me is that stop, have a look, have a look at what you're doing. And see who you are within all this. You are just, you're just, you're alive because you're the breath. And so what is there? Why do you have to make yourself more? But life is all that it is. You see, you don't have to really. Thank you. Is that That's right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So the title was, what should I talk about? And we have three great examples down here of people who, at some point in the near future, will probably be giving their first speech. So if you could just, in like two sentences, give them one piece of advice about how they should choose their topic, what would it be? My topic is also usually, I scan through my life and I say, let me see what I could share that I learned from. And that easy. And I stand here and I say, okay, for today, some, sometimes usually I know the, the, if I know the people there, if, if you have a problem with your relationship, I will choose my relationship point. And I will say, all right, this is what I learned from the relationship. Okay, then I assist myself, I assist you. And as I change, you change. And when you change, the world changes. And when the world changes, we create heaven. Yeah. So anyone, any questions?